Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got some special guests joining us today from the Black Promoters Collective. We have Troy Brown, Shelby Joyner, Gary Guidry, and Janice. Janice? Janice? Janice! Janice, yeah. Janice, Janice Cotton. Cotton. It's a common name. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> tell, tell, all right, welcome, welcome, how, how welcome. How are y'all? Good morning. All right, all right. Good morning. Good morning. Tell us Make what sure the, you guys talk in the mic, too, when yes. you talk. I know we got a lot of, uh, yeah. Tell us what the, the BPC, the Black Promoters Collective, is, first of all. Go ahead, G. Well, it's the Black Promoters Collective. It's a group of uh, the top independent promoters that come together. Uh, we came together over covid uh, the break, um, it allowed us some time to slow down and just think about where we were. And we saw a lot of things culturally in the country, a lot of division and a um, lot of uh, just violence in the streets. And it just sparked that emotion in us to say, you know, we've always talked about coming together and um, doing something great for this culture. And so it gave us the time to slow down and just think about it and actually start to get the movement going. And so we all came together and turned it into a real business. And now we're out here doing some of the biggest concerts in the country. It's been a, just an amazing experience. For people that don't know, where are you guys from individually? Uh, I'm from Houston, Texas. Uh, G Squared Events was my company. Mm -hmm. And um, I live Shelby. I'm originally from New York. Mm -hmm. Just moved to Atlanta. Um, been here for over 20 years just doing shows. Do you not say the Bronx on purpose so people don't think you're crazy? I'm from the, I'm from the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> Janice. SJ Presents, CEO. I'm from Oakland, yeah. California, and Bay Area Productions is our company. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm originally from Boston, mm -hmm. um, but I live, I go back and forth between Atlanta and Raleigh. So, so now, you know, we said that, how did you guys get together? I know what happened during the pandemic. Did you guys previously know each other or did y'all respect each other? Because y'all know y'all all in the same business. How did y'all get together on the phone and said, this is what we want to do? Um, we originally started a, a company. It was called... Um, um, promoters of record, mm -hmm. and there was four of us. Um, it was a Rick Johnson from Chicago, Suleiman Maousi from Detroit, myself and Bill Ingram from Philly, and we started to have a partnership, and we started the girls' escape. That's when they first came back. Mm -hmm. um, we did a huge two shows in Detroit, and once we did those two shows, they kind of promised us the tour at the time, but unfortunately it didn't happen, and they wound up going to one of the big box companies, which was AG Live after we kind of branded them. We just didn't have the infrastructure at the time or the capital to make the move. So we told ourselves that'll never happen again. Mm -hmm. So how could we empower ourselves as an organization? Mm -hmm. So we met Gary Guidry. Um, he was doing millennial tour, a lot of big tours out there. So he had that infrastructure, that touring infrastructure. And a lot of our other partners was already popping in their markets. Mm -hmm. So we was like, listen, let's just all come together and just form Voltron, right? And we started having calls. At first it started with like maybe 50 people, mm -hmm. 60 people, and we dwindled it down to about six people or six companies, mm -hmm. and that's who we are today. Mm -hmm. So y'all coming together to like compete with the Live Nations and the AEGs of the world? Bingo. Okay. And I, and I think the notion there, that, uh, I think the notion there, Charlemagne, is that, you know, much like you're seeing, and it, it's interesting that we say the post-George Floyd era, right? Because, you know, it did take that for a lot of things to transpire, you know, across the board. You know, you look at what a, what what's happening with a lot of black companies, you know, media, entertainment, IP. You look at companies like Group Black. You look at the black effect. Mm -hmm. We're doing that same thing in the live touring entertainment IP space. It's literally that same thing. As a matter of fact, we're having discussions with some of those other entities with how how we as people of color and black entities can now Voltron and really ultimately control our IP, create our IP, control our IP, and what we're saying is buy back the block. Well, I was gonna ask, yeah. you know, with, with you guys doing these concerts and I, do you guys have a lot of difficulty with these concert venues and these halls the fact that you are black, where they make you jump through hoops and do other things that maybe these other brands or these other box companies, like you said, don't have to do. Well, definitely, that that has been the you know the upstream swim that we've been our whole careers. You know, the because oh, Houston's killing yeah. me right now. I'm gonna talk to you after this. Call. Houston's <laughs> killing me right now. Bro. And I feel like Live Nation owns a lot of venues too. Yeah, they own mm -hmm. a lot of the venues, and uh, AG manage a lot of the venues as mm -hmm. well. Um, they are the, definitely the two biggest in the world, and um, you know. 
really the, the, the spark for this is about the culture. You know, so many of our artists, um, their brands, um, how they're um, communicated to the, in, in, to the community is controlled. That narrative is controlled by people who don't look like us. Mm-hmm. It's controlled by people in, in, in cubicles and a part of these big box agencies that, that tell the story of our culture. And so um, we're in the streets. We, we're, we're in the coffee shops and the barber shops and beauty shops. We're just being in the community promoting so we understand how to connect a Mary J. Blige back to the beauty shop, how to make sure that, that, that the, the message or the brand that she wants to communicate is definitely communicated on the streets. So that's, that's really what this is about. It's, it's, it's about. it's about the culture. It's about changing the narrative of who we are, what we look like, because we're not just you know, what we see in the streets on these killings and, and just the, the negativity that normally comes with businesses being black you know, that we don't do good business. I was asking, how, how do you get around the politics of it? I mean, because I'm, I'm saying, like, let's say you want to do it a Millennium concert, right? Now, if somebody wanted to bring Eric Clapton to the same venue, I'm mm-hmm. almost a thousand percent mm-hmm. sure that some of the things that you had to do, yep. they didn't have to do. Yep. Mm-hmm. So how do you deal with that? And is there a way around it? Well, it's, it's I'm really... Sure they make you get extra security. I'm sure they make you get extra insurance. I'm sure they do sure. all the small little things that I'm sure they don't test other companies. Yeah, I mean, you know, it has definitely been a struggle, um, but it's like any business. Part of it is is culturally uh, a cultural bias that's there, but another part of it is is green dollar scaling. You know, so if you're bringing one show to Madison Square Garden and another company's bringing 25 shows to Madison Square Garden, it's the Walmart effect. Mm-hmm. How many units can I buy? You know, mm-hmm. what's the price point that I can get? So part of this is not only to um, show that culturally as a black business owners that we can scale and we can demand those type of deals. So when we're bringing 20 shows to a venue, then give me apples to apples with Live Nation. Give me apples to apples with AEG. We're not coming saying, I got one show, they got 20. We're saying, no, we got a lot more shows now because we have come together to scale. So when we talk about this competition, it's, it's, it's not necessarily a dead set on competition, but it's more of a movement to buy back the block, bring our culture, and then actually present our culture in a way to venues on a level that is able to be scaled. Mm-hmm. And that's that's how we can come together and actually expand brand partnerships and partner with some of the big corporations right. on the sponsorship level because we are scaling and we have a certain volume of content that allows us to tell that story and we're not squeezed out because we don't have enough content. Are yeah. you guys doing the Mary J. Blige Good Morning Gorgeous tour? We are. We are. Okay, we so are. I want we you to walk me through that process mm-hmm. and, and how you acquired that. So I think it's a couple of things, and that's a great question, Angie. And so I think we have to finish answering your question first on how we got there, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's demonstrated in the work that we did with the first two major tours, Envy, mm-hmm. right? So when you look at Polestar now and you see the success of the night tour, top 10 tour, right? You see success of the Culture Tour, New Edition, Jodeci, Charlie Wilson, another top 10 tour. Well, for the first half of the That was all y'all? That's all us. Wow. Yeah, top 10 in the world. When you look at Polestar and you look at the top 10 tours for the first half of the year, those are the only two black tours. Mm. That's the Black Promoters Collective. So when you say, how are you guys getting treated? Yes, treated one way prior to, treated another way after. Gotcha. Now let me pivot to your question. That now allows us to romanticize and, and, our, and package our business to now go to the queen of our culture that right. we all grew up with as hip hop kids, right? And say, okay, Mary, let's Proof of check, concept. check the it roster. Worked. Here's yeah. the case studies, yeah. right? We love you, we know who you are, we know what you mean to us. You're now coming off the Super Bowl Billboard Icon Award, right? You know, let's partner, and here's what we can do. Here's what we do. To Gary's point, not only from a what you know from a business perspective, from below the line level, but an above the line level. Look, we're we're credible on in the streets and in the boardrooms, and I think that affords us a a, a, a different narrative than the big box big box companies that you guys talked about. Right? We can do it in both in both arenas, which. Mm-hmm. It allows us to maneuver in ways that the other folks can't. I can and see her and her team that. being excited also yeah. to be able absolutely, to do that. Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah. 
we're buying millions of dollars worth of media guys and we're doing it all internally, right? So we're doing the digital, the social, the mobile, the radio, the street teams, the grassroots, that's all us. So we're ultimately in effect an agency unto ourselves. So to Gary's point, now we can go have big brand conversations and partnerships and we're doing social partnerships as well. You know, you saw during the culture tour, New Edition was going into the boys' clubs, giving bikes back, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. to the kids. Mm -hmm. You saw presentations to foundations across all these cities that were happening on, on the tours. You saw Maxwell talking about really black culture things in ways that he was not prior to this tour. Mm -hmm. that's, it, that's how we're partnering with our people, with our talent, mm -hmm. in ways that... They, it, the, the other big boxes aren't necessarily doing. Why? Because we come from the places that they come from, and we're looking at life through the same lenses that they are. Mm. What you're saying yeah. is so important, man, because a lot of times, you know, it, it's not necessarily that people look at something and say, oh, white ice is colder. They just look at it and say, that that has worked. So when you've got artists look at y'all and y'all got a track record now, they have no reason to deny, Correct. you know, mm -hmm. getting down with y'all. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And the money is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. and that, that's right. the big thing, the too. The money is mm -hmm. all there. Yeah, when right. you start talking about A-list artists, um, there, there's there's always, when you start talking about 15, 25, 50, 60 million dollar gross in tours, the question is, is, okay, if I go with the big box agencies, I know the money's there. They're backed by Wall Street, the money's mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Win or lose. So when we start to prove that, hey, win or lose or draw, the money's there, then you attract those A-listers that say, okay, you know, if I can't rock with these guys and the money's there, and I don't have to worry about that part, I know they're going to beat the block a little harder than the other guys. Mm -hmm. I know they're going to put me, you know, put my posters back in the beauty shots like they used to be. Because we're going to do social media. A lot of the other entities, they just say, hey, A-lister, you're an A-lister. Post on social media, announce the tour, and we're good. If it sell, it sell. If it don't, it don't. It's on your brand. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna like we say we say no. We're gonna partner with these artists, mm. and so if you could do one sold out stadium show, partner with us. We do two sold out stadium shows because we're gonna we're gonna reach we're gonna go harder on the areas that and turn over all the rocks that that don't normally get turned over, especially in today's social post. You know, announce and we're done. Right, and and partner with media outlets that the other big boxes candidly don't. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we know. I'm not gonna list them all because you know, but. We know the burgeoning blogs, the burgeoning channels, the bur you know, just all mm -hmm. the burgeoning bloggers. We know all of that stuff mm -hmm. to really help, you know, turn our tours into rocket ships and, and get people butts in seats. But again, yep. doing the other partnerships that they, that, that they wouldn't think about. Now, doing all these tours, what was the most difficult thing for you guys to overcome? Actually <laughs> acquiring the talent. Really? Yeah. And I got to give Shelby so much credit for that because he's knocking down, kicking in doors with mm -hmm. a lot of these agents. You, you know, you, yeah. the, the, you have the to big sell building. in a way that no one else has to sell. Usually it's all about the P&L and, and the money, right? With us, we have to prove everything, you know, so it's a fight. But we understand that. That's where we're from, right? We have to fight first, mm -hmm. right? And then hopefully, you know, we're walking in and just our name alone and our capital will be enough and our track record. Mm -hmm. But it's very difficult. Like, for us to get married, it took us almost a year, mm -hmm. right? We had to fight against all the big box agencies, the internal politics, mm -hmm. everything that came. And right now, we're feeling really good about the tour. And it's also about packaging. A lot of these promoters don't know how to package. Mm -hmm. You know, when people come to a show, they want to get their money's worth. When we did New Edition, not only did you get New Edition, but you had Charlie Wilson, you had Jodeci. So every penny that you spent, you felt like it was well worth it mm -hmm. when you walked in there. And the presentation from our production, right, and how we present ourselves was very key, making sure that the show started at 8 o'clock if we said it's 8 o'clock, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Getting those artists to that stage so people that have to go home late to pick up their kids and mm -hmm. things of that nature, that's very important. So we understand that because we have a lot of experience in this game. Mm -hmm. You know, 20 plus years for all of us. And you have to make sure the show ends on time or you have to pay those fees How that about are that? How about that? tremendous. Absolutely. <laughs> now, you guys talked about certain things that make you different from uh, the experiences that you can offer these artists and things that you can do for them. So can you list some of those things that might make somebody say, you know what? I want to go with Black Promoters Collective over this because I know the personalized experience I'm going to get also includes these additional things. So this mm -hmm. is a back this is a back end business. 
mm-hmm. right? And when I say back end, most artists as A-listers, they're getting 85% of their door, right? So it's all come down to your back end money. We're the promoters that's going to go out there to speak to what Gary was saying is beat the streets up. Mm-hmm. We're going to be in the salons. We're going to be in the barbershops. We have relationships with radio jocks and radio stations, right? And we also know how to package. So it's not just about the artists. So when we come as the Black Promoter Collective, you know you're getting a 360 from us, right? Mm -hmm. We know how to package. We know how to market. Our capital is right. And at the same time, it's fun. When we're on tour with these artists, Mm -hmm. we speak the same language. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about coming to work and you dealing with someone that you don't even like, that don't even understand your culture. You know, we walk the same. We talk the same. We dress the same, you know? So it's 25 cities. It's like, oh, it's over? You know, right. how can we do a, a second leg, right? Because it's fun. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. something that we actually passionate about. Right. And I mm-hmm. think a personalized experience is great, too, because sometimes people will just put together a plan and follow that plan with everybody. But it feels like with this, everything is uh, more tailored to who is actually going on a tour. Absolutely. Shelby's yeah. point was seminal, Angie, because, you know, I, that speaks to, like, literally how new edition felt when we were done, right? Because they're coming into an arena and it felt like a family environment, right? Massage therapists, right? The <laughs> trucking, the tours, the lighting, the caterers, all businesses of color. So back to what, something that you alluded to, Charlemagne, right? The economic impact that we're driving around our tours is more than just what you see from a concert perspective, NBA, mm-hmm. right? Our ve- we're, we are very, very particular right, about who we're doing business with and how the money flows, right? Gary's running the production, the trucking companies, the lighting, the touring, what you see on the screens Mm -hmm. and who's running all that. We're particular about making sure we're doing black business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The vendors, the the caterers, black businesses. So Mm -hmm. how does, how are these, the artists want to know, are they Mm -hmm. having an impact on that as well? And they can feel, yes, they're getting their money, but they're also putting black money Mm -hmm. back into the communities. We're not just taking from the communities that we're coming into, we're putting money back into those communities. Yeah, How was your home life? Hold on real quick. (laughs) Tour. (laughs) <laughs> 25 cities or is your wife and husbands and kids uh, like mm-hmm. where's my dad or oh, where's my mom man. you know how, how is home life that's that's the great thing about <laughs> this company yeah Gary that's the know, reason like, I did it <laughs> this is one of the reasons he, he did it if you yeah. look at Billboard and you look at Polestar mm-hmm. you know he had Millennial Tour that's a brand in itself right but it was all about I can't do it by myself every night going on the road right my wife is at home you know my kids can't see their dad so we said, okay, all of us have the experience to actually go out there and go on the road. So I might take the East Coast. He could take the South. He could mm. take the West. You know, someone could go abroad, mm-hmm. you know. So it was a plan. It was a structure because we're up in age. You know, we're not no babies. We got children. I got to be at the AAU game and I got to coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I got to be at my, my daughter's acting schools and lessons and things of that nature. I have to do that. So this just works because it's like, okay, I can trust this guy right here. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I can look him in his eyes and know that he's not going to do anything wrong to me. Here's the baton. Right? You take it's, it from here. It's exactly. very important. Exactly. And, exactly. and somebody like Janice, we always we got to have a black black queens like Janice and Shahida to keep us in check. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's another thing. You know, Angela, you, you were talking about what's the differentiator. You know, most, the vast majority of tour producers and concert promoters are men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't see a lot of women out there getting it, you know, mm-hmm. booking it basically selling out arenas, right? Well, we got two wonderful concert promoters, women in our organization, Janice Cotton and Shahida Mahusi. Shahida runs an entire amphitheater on the water in Detroit, one of the most beautiful amphitheaters in the country, and she's a woman of color. Barry Productions, Janice and Lionel, they've, I mean, they've toured Stevie Wonder, they've toured, I mean, you name it, Jamie Foxx's, and so, Woman of color, yeah. you didn't know Janice toured Jamie Foxx mm-hmm. at the height of his, you know, touring oh, yeah. career. Mm-hmm. You didn't know that they toured Stevie Wonder. You know that they're protégés of the late Bill Graham, one of the greatest promoters who pretty much started this whole thing that we do today. You know, we got black women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a part of this business, and you don't often see that. You know, when you go across the street, black women doing this national thing. That's real. Uh, the, the new edition tour. That was a tough tour to put together because they they had they, they had to, after the movie they didn't tour or nothing and everybody was everybody was wondering like yo why y'all missing out on all this yeah. money so how did y'all even convince them to, to get together that was the one everybody was waiting to see right? that's right yeah. since yeah. since the movie so yeah. 
How did y'all convince me to get together? <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they still man, don't know. I mean, it, it all comes down to relationships. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's what it's about. Oh, we man. can communicate with them. I could call Mike Bivens and talk to him. He could whisper to me or whatever, and I could talk a little louder, right? Yeah. He could talk John. He could call Johnny Gill. Whisper. Mike, <laughs> Mike, Mike it's, whisper. Just, it's just Mike, right? <laughs> yeah. So at the end of the day, we could talk the same language. What it come down to is the money, right? So we have to be, yo, listen, we have the money. We could compete. So once we have the money, everything else is about what's the plan. So these guys have been scarred through this industry where people have robbed them and did things. You've seen the story, right? Mm -hmm. With us, it wasn't about don't trust me. It's black and white. We're going to do what we say, say mm -hmm. we're going to do, right? We're going to bring, if we say we're going to pay you a certain amount of money, we're going to pay you. Yeah. And at the end of the tour, they never made this amount of money in their careers. If they came up here today or tomorrow, they'll tell you that, right? The environment was right, but the money was right. Right? Yeah, so they it took definitely, a whole lot. They, this mm -hmm. was the biggest payday of their career. So if you wow. call Johnny and you call Mike, who called Ralph? Who called Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> and you call Mike, that's what I need to know. Boston has an edge. We'll let them tell you. <laughs> Man, it, 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 it was, was, it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was a lot of back and forth. And, and I mean, this part of our talks with them individually, even before we were collective, was all going before the pandemic even happened. You know, it's like, well, you like everybody say, where's the movie came out? Where the mm -hmm. tour? Where the tour? Where the tour? And I think during the pandemic, those guys had a, had a chance, just like we did, to slow down, to talk amongst themselves, and just clean up some some issues that mm -hmm. they had, so they could tour. And then it was when it was time to tour, we actually had an offer, and we lost it to AEG. We we lost the deal to wow. AEG, mm -hmm. and you know, they signed with AEG, or they were about to sign with AEG, and the direction of the project. You know, just open the door for us to sneak back in there and say, look, you know, you see what you're about to get into with that. That's running slow. You know, they're going to do what they want to do when they feel like they're ready to do. It. We're going to partner with you. Tell us where you want to be. We want to be out in the, in the spring. OK. Came. We talked. We say the money's there. Let's go. And they rock with us, you know. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, that goes to when artists sign with. You know, the biggest, the two biggest companies in the world, you kind of, you do what they say do when they say do it, mm -hmm. you know, versus having more of a collaborative decision when you're rocking with your people who understand that, no, when we come out, this is the time, this is where it's supposed to be, and this is who we want to perform with. That's we right. want this to be an event. We want we want to shock the world with this, mm -hmm. you know, but some of the other big box agents, they'll be like, okay, well, if you can sell the tickets and we're paying you all this money, you know, we'll put a couple of opening acts on there because you get in the bag. You should put the bus in the seat. But they wanted an event. And so we were able to collaborate and Shelby talking Charlie into to not being a headliner in a sense of the way Charlie has always been a Charlie's always been his own headliner mm -hmm. for the last, what, fifteen years maybe? You know? For him to say, Okay, I'll go in a supporting role for this group. Now you know that took a special conversation. Mm -hmm. And keeping Joe to see together. And keeping Joe to see all <laughs> four wow. together the whole tour. The whole entire the whole tour. Tour. Sounds like a movie, right? Man, that? so that you comes, know, sounds that, like you stress. That comes to that, <laughs> like like we was talking about. That's where you you come in the room and you can have conversations right. with yeah. Joe to see and Charlie yeah. and say, hey, this is not just about you guys. But y'all gotta handle rehearsals too, because you know when when they come because you know like they were on pandemic. I'm sure for two years they haven't been rehearsing, <clears> they haven't been practicing. But you know, although you can get them, you still want them to have a great show. So next time when people hear your name, they're like, oh, that show was amazing. Do so y'all have to do that as well? Like set up the rehearsal, set up lighting, or do yeah. you allow them yeah, to do that? We, we set it up, but we got to give credit when credit is due. Michael Perrin was the manager for Charlie Wilson and Jodeci. He put a lot of that stuff together. He brought them yeah. together. So yeah. we respect that. Brooke Payne from New Edition. Brooke, nobody he could put a show better He was behind the scenes than, and he was putting that show together. None yeah. of this could have been possible yeah. without them. I just want to yeah. Yeah. tell no you. Question. No yeah. question. We appreciate what, what, you. Guys. What's some events y'all got coming up for, for through BBCs? So we can support. Yeah, so right now we have the Mary J. Mary Blige J. tour mm -hmm. that Tickets actually on sale today. goes on sale today oh, okay. with mm -hmm. Ella May and Queen Naja. <clears throat> we also just did a deal with DJ Cassidy. Mm -hmm. um, he has a Pastor Mike brand that we're going to yep. take live. That's dope. Right? And then we have a lot of events that we're putting together right now, you know, individually that's kind of together. Right, and we're still working that out because we're a new company. Mm -hmm. But we do, I do 40, 50 shows a year just in New York and Jersey alone. Gary do same amount of shows. We all mm -hmm. have our individual companies, but we're in the process of trying to put everything together to create this giant mm -hmm. right. 
you know, it makes sense because they can go from your venues to your venues yeah, to your yes, venues and correct. Yes. expand. Yeah. Yes, I love it, man. The unity and group operation is a must. Like this is, uh, it's honestly the only yeah. way to move is a, if you're black now. You got to move as a collective. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah, cooperative yeah. I mean, economics. That's right. In this business is about scalability. People want to know how big, far, and wide that you can take their brand, and you know, being a a, a small operation, you know, it's only going to go so far because. You know, culture is culture. That's fine. But if you're a global brand, you want to partner with people that can take you globally. Mm-hmm. That just makes sense. That's just business. That's not even black or green or blue. Secure, That's just business. You can secure endorsements. and All of that. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. It. That's it. All of that. And this whole thing is going full circle mm-hmm. because my first show that I ever did, I was right next to this man right mm-hmm. here. And Kevin Hunter. My first concert at the Paradise Theater. Mm-hmm. Paradise Theater, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my first concert. Right, I had to really convince some people to make it happen. From was that, that a point small on, budget if you had who was the artist? Already. I'm trying to think. It was it, it was a comedy show. It was <laughs> um, show. it was called um, Who's the Next Biggest Comedian or something like that. We <laughs> came up with it and we were supposed to do it with um, Donnell Jones. Mm-hmm. He didn't show up and we wound up getting Life Jenny. And we did 1,700 people. I would never wow. forget. <laughs> in a, uh, a 3,700 seat venue, Ooh. and it was crazy. I wound up owning that same venue a couple of years later. Wow. And that was the start of our career. Wow. Well, congratulations and good luck. Wow. And definitely, if you're out there, pick up your tickets to go see Mary J. Blige. You know that. The Good yeah, Morning man. Gorgeous Tour. Morning, and Troy, I know you're from Boston, so um, you having a party for the Warriors tonight after they beat y'all in game six <laughs> to the finals? Don't talk to you like that. Don't talk to you like that. Don't talk to you like that. Did he say something? No, he didn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing. Did he say I got 17 rings. How many y'all got? We Kevin. <laughs> we coming? They have four after the uh, night. <laughs> it's the Black Promoters Collective. Thank you for joining us. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. 